Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today we have a confirmed release for Intel's 12th Gen. The 12900K gets a ton of benchmarks. Intel's Arc GPUs are called what? And their entire Arc GPU lineup gets leaked. Okay, it's news time ma'am. First up for today, we have confirmation on the release date of Intel's upcoming 12th Gen CPUs. Remember that this is a pivotal moment for Intel, as they're finally moving their mainstream desktop parts to 10 nanometers. Of course, this is a much better 10 nanometer process than the company's first try, but let's just say we've been waiting for a really long time. Well, in a new press release from MSI, the company announced a free upgrade kit for their core liquid CPU coolers. That kit would give support for the upcoming LGA 1700 socket, which is the new socket for Intel's 12th gen part. Well, that upgrade kit isn't available until November 4th, and after some digging, video cards confirm with their sources that Intel's 12th gen is set for release on November 4th. Not only that, but WCCF Tech's Usman claims that pre-orders will go live on October 27th. And of course, November 4th is earlier than the day we last heard from WCCF Tech, but Intel could have easily changed it. Either way, 10 nanometers looks to finally be around the corner. Or, I guess it's called Intel 7 now? And with all this new hardware coming out, there's no better time to learn computer science. And there's no better place than with today's sponsor. Brilliant, the website and app that was built to teach the STEM field, and that includes computer science. From learning the fundamentals to much deeper topics like artificial neural networks or even quantum computing, Brilliant has you covered. Plus, they teach you by actually having you do it, not just memorizing formulas or listening to boring lectures. To top it off, Brilliant has been updating their courses to make them even more interactive, which means better learning for you. So don't wait around any longer and visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up, while talking Intel's 12th gen CPUs, we have a few more benchmarks. First is some preliminary tests that were originally posted by Psy Software themselves, though they clearly didn't mean to post it as it has since been taken down. As for what it shows, you can see that Intel's 12900K does all right in some, but not so great in others, losing to both the 5900X and their last gen 11900K, though that's likely due to 12th gen CPUs not including support for the AVX 512 instruction set. With that said, we have a second benchmark that comes from Billy Billy, and as you can see, it's clearly the 12900K being pitted against AMD's 5950X. Now, while they blurred out the multi-core score, the single-core benchmark got a whopping 825, which is unreal. Not only does it crush the 5950X with a score that's 27% higher, but it decimates the previous winner by nearly 20%. Not only that, but while the actual multi-core score is blurred out, you can see the line goes all the way across like the 5950X, meaning the scores are likely similar. Basically, most benchmarks point to Intel's 12900K taking the performance crown. Then again, there's clearly some ways it may not be that great. Next up for today, the actual naming scheme for Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs have leaked. Once again, remember that their ARC lineup is the company's first real try at discrete gaming GPUs, and their first gen parts are codenamed Alchemist. Now, with that in mind, we haven't really heard anything on the final product names of the upcoming parts. That is, until now. In a new post by leaker Momomo underscore US, he shared some guidelines from Intel on their upcoming ARC GPUs. And when we look, we can see that their parts are set to be called Intel ARC A series, with the A clearly referring to Alchemist. What that means is that their next gen parts will likely be called the B series for Battle Mage, then C series, etc. Not only that, but it mentions three numbers after the A, meaning they'd be called something like A300, A500, etc. So instead of AMD's RX 6000 or Nvidia's RTX 3000, we'd be looking at Intel Arc A300. Of course, we'd likely shorten it to just A300, but regardless, Intel is clearly getting close to launch. And with that, we finally have information on what looks to be the entire lineup of Intel's Arc GPUs. That's right. 
in a new video from Moore's Law is Dead. He claims that Intel is planning to launch three cards, a low-end card, mid-range, and then closer to the high end. So let's go over it. First, we have the low-end card, which would come with 128 EUs and be clocked between 2.2 and 2.5 GHz. It would then get either 4 or 8 GB of GDDR6 with a power draw of under 75 watts. Now, with that said, a user from Chipel recently shared an image of what should be the lower-end model, and he claims that it comes with 6 GB and has a power draw of around 65 watts. So obviously these are early figures, but the three SKUs looks to be the case. Either way, when talking performance of the low-end part, Moore's Law's Dead claims that it gets between a 1650 and 1650 Super. Next, we have the mid-range part, and according to this, both the high-end and mid-range parts are based on the same die. This is, of course, how both AMD and NVIDIA do things. Simply put, some parts can be damaged, so instead of just throwing it away, they disable cores to make up a lower-tier card. Either way, this part is set to come with 384 EUs, though there's apparently a 448 EU part, but he believes it to be a mobile part. That comes with either 8 or 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 and performs between a 3060 and 3060 Ti. And finally, we have the high-end part, which includes the full fat GPU at 512 EUs. It's also clocked between 2.2 and 2.5 GHz, which is obviously huge. This part comes with a whopping 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 and currently comes with an 8 and 6 pin connector. He claims that it's under 235 watts except for a potential special edition card. This card also looks like a silver version of the drone video Intel showed us a little while back. And finally, when it comes to performance, he's expecting between a 3060 Ti and 3070 Ti. Basically, right around what we've been hearing so far. Overall, these look to be quite impressive for a first run. Of course, right now, pricing and availability are more important than anything. And don't forget to check out my RX 6800 non-XT GPU giveaway. Check that out in the description below. So while that does it for today, do you think Intel's upcoming GPUs can compete? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!